uh, responsive prayers and lyrics will all be up on the screen so you don't have to fumble with hymn books or figure out what am I doing and then one of the questions we always get asked is when do I stand when do I sit when do I stand don't worry about it we usually stand when we're singing a hymn but if you follow yeah if you follow you'll see you can, and, and I will try and remember to invite people to stand and sit as they are able but it's it's not a big deal if you're standing when you're supposed to be sitting or vice versa God will still love you so blessings as we enter this time of worship and community and I'll ask Christine to share some of the news with us Good morning and happy Easter everybody. It's great to see you all here. So I'll keep it brief because we got a lot of very exciting stuff going on today. First of all, just uh, always look in our newsletter. It contains way more than I'm going to highlight and uh, you might notice that actually as of next week we're pretty much going down to one service per week. So in case that feels weird, just you know, uh, it's, it's actually correct for the next little while. <laughs> and, and our minister seems happy about that. Okay, uh, a few things ha happening. We have a contra dance, a social dance night coming next Saturday. It's at 7 p.m. Uh, you can buy tickets in advance or show up and enjoy. And uh, Susan Hawker is your contact if you would like to uh, uh, find out more. Uh, there is a social committee survey going around. You'll find the link in the newsletter. And it's a survey uh, as to would you like to be part of a games time uh, at night or in the afternoon. Um, so if you answer the survey, they'll know a little bit more about uh, who's interested and who, uh, how many people would be likely to come. And a few other general announcements. For one thing, local food banks are really in need. And you know, we have some quite nearby. So do think of that when you're out shopping. And uh, the Festival de la Voix, which is a really great uh, local music festival, is ongoing till April 19th. And with that, let us worship. Thank you, Christine. Wow, lots, of ha lots happening. So this time of our service, we like to begin by acknowledging the territory that we're on. And before we begin our actual worship with language that is ancient and music that comes from intentional community, I think it's important to acknowledge other ancient and intentional communities, ancient and modern people and peoples who have inhabited and continue to inhabit this land on which we worship. And together, <clears throat> this is the traditional land of the Ganyan Gehaga, Huron Wendat and Anishinaabe peoples. And we are deeply grateful to be here and to ground ourselves in the land which has been a place where people have lived for thousands of years. I will invite our choir to lead us in our centering song. Okay. All right. So this is going to be a bit surprising, this song to you, I think. Um, Advent, we, we, we did Advent all uh, from the perspective of Mary. That was kind of the theme of how Advent went this year and Christmas Eve. So we're picking up in a way where we left off. So now you're going to hear the Easter story from Mary's perspective. You'll be surprised by this song.
let us join together in our call to worship. And what's in bold is I invite you to respond. Christ is risen. He's risen indeed. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. you're at home, you're invited to light a candle at this time. Oh, Easter God, the wick is ignited, and the light of hope and transformation is before us. How amazing that a single beam of light can change our way of experiencing life. May we rest in the glow of Christ's love, ever radiating, radiating sparks of peace and a new dawn. Amen. Let's join together in our opening prayer. God of grace and power, we've longed and prepared for this joyous day. On Ash Wednesday, we humbled ourselves before you. On Monday, Thursday, we learned a new commandment. On Good Friday, we cried at the foot of the cross. On Holy Saturday, we kept vigil. And on this blessed Sunday, we rejoice in the risen power of love, of hope, and new life. May this rising real in our own lives and let us be people of love, hope, and new life. Let us be people of joy. In Jesus' name, amen. Our opening hymn from Voices United, number 179, is Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Give Thanks.
invite Christine to lead us in the Holy Word. Listen to the word from the Gospel of John, the resurrection of Jesus. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. She turned. Oh, oops. Jesus said to her, Do not touch me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. May the Holy One add understanding to these words. Let us pray. O oh God, may these spoken words illuminate your written word and draw us into your living word of love. O oh God, we pray. Amen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. This ancient Easter greeting heralds the defining story of our faith. God's love in action is evident in our readings. Women, oh yes, women, proclaim the risen Christ. And the Hebrew scriptures speak of God's promises. Our story proclaims the good news that is available to us all. In all of the Gospels, in all of the renditions of the resurrection, Jesus' first appearance is to the women. I guess we had a big responsibility and still do. In John, some of the disciples can't believe that Jesus is alive again. And indeed, people have wildly different reactions to Jesus' resurrection. Mary weeps. Peter runs away. And many of the disciples are full of disbelief. Hmm. This is a story. This is a holy story. This is our story. It's a story, a life-changing, transforming story. It's a story of a radical rabbi born to a poor carpenter and his fiancée who grew up in an occupied land. 
It's about how he grew up to tell everyone that God is loose in the world. It's about how he caused such a ruckus that his loved ones begged him to lay low for a while. But he wouldn't because he was on a mission. It's about the powers that be that captured him and mocked him and beat him and killed him while the people looked on and some even joined in. It's a story about how he was buried in a cold tomb, hewn out of the rock, sealed there presumably forever, like every human who had died before him. And it's a story about Mary, who found that tomb empty three days later. You know, the astonishing news of the resurrection transformed Jesus' followers into these courageous preachers of good news. What's good news for you in this story? What would you go and tell others about what happened? You know, Easter in many westernized contexts has been popularized through the Easter Bunny, chocolates, my favorite, hot cross buns, and searching for eggs. Okay, tell me who hasn't participated in at least one of those? Raise your hand. Yeah. <laughs> Well, there's nothing, absolutely nothing necessarily wrong with marking Easter this way. It can also make it a challenge to define what Easter means aside from those popular customs. So think for a moment, what customs do you and your family have around Easter? How did they emerge? How were they shaped? There are really different ways of understanding the resurrection. For example, some people might describe the resurrection as a, a literal event where a body was raised. Some think of it a bit more metaphorically, on, which is more about transformation and rebirth. But what does it mean to you? And do you think who's telling the story impacts how we receive it? How we hear it? how we live it. How do we react when we hear news that might seem difficult to believe? And what's needed for these realities to be believed? How might we each have the courage to tell our stories, our realities, even if they seem incredulous? Over the last few weeks at Merging Waters, we've journeyed with the theme of let go and let come. You can see the beautiful, actually, our, I won't embarrass the person, but our artist is in the room. <laughs> One of our younger, younger people who did a really great job. And this theme invited us into the possibility of a perspective seen as a process towards liberation. It was about Jesus studying on his own of 40 days in the wilderness and then letting things go as he journeyed, becoming liberated of governance, of power structures, and eventually no more fear of death. It's been the tradition for many years in many communities at Lent of, what are you giving up for Lent? Well, I'm gonna give up chocolate or I'll give up chips or I'll, but we were invited to reframe that into what did we want to let go of? And instead of something punitive, what are you releasing? So you, what can you make space for? What can you let come? Let go and let come. We were invited into a time of growing for ourselves. We started with Abraham and Sarai, and clearly they gave up on children at their age, and they let go of assumptions of what their life would look like. But God had a surprise for them, and they were willing to accept and trust in faith. And then we journeyed through Jesus' reframing of family while he was dying on the cross. And he said to one of his disciples, here's your mother. And he said to his mother, here is your son. The week after, we heard from Carling and a powerful living testimony of how her faith 
has transformed her life and healing. And then two weeks ago, Reverend Joelle, we did a pulpit swap, so we switched places just to confuse the whole congregation. And Reverend Joelle, who was here, reminded us that this journey that we're on is not easy. And just like composting, it's really hard and sometimes sticky, stinky and smelly work. Last week, we paraded and protested with the people living under Roman rule, hoping for a savior. And these people were both hopeful and desperate for real change. It's that tension between hope and waiting, esperanza in Spanish, and how we can live our lives with the Bible in one hand and the newspaper in the other. How do we engage from a perspective of faith to offer justice and compassion in a broken world that is just crying out desperately for love? And then someone reminded me, perhaps it's not protesting. Perhaps we reframe that to a demonstration of love. Mahatma Gandhi, Oscar Romero, Martin Luther King Jr., they did not compromise in their demonstrations of love, even in the face of fear, oppression, and discrimination. I think we are called to disrupt the societal narrative in a new and a radical way. Imagine a way of love. So we experienced the death this week, but it became life, a new life. And it invites us to relearn how to care for one another in a meaningful way. Let go and let come. Let's disrupt the societal narrative with new hope. And Tibe, who's hiding somewhere, uh, somewhere around there with the kids, his baptism that we're going to celebrate in a few minutes is a symbol of this new hope, of this resurrection, of this all-encompassing love that is lived out in community. Now, when you uh, walked into the sanctuary, you were invited to get a butterfly. Is anyone missing a butterfly? If you are, please hold up your hand, and I will ask the ushers to come to you. So everyone has, ah, we're missing one there, and one back here, and two up here, and one in the choir. <laughs> so I'm going to invite you, <laughs> I'm going to invite you to hold on to your butterfly for just a moment. And I'm going to invite you to just close your eyes for one second and imagine one thing. One thing that you, that we, that all of us can change to make this world, to make our living a place of unrelenting, all-encompassing, all-inclusive, no-holds-barred world of love. And I'm going to invite you to bring your butterflies over to the cross here. And we're going to, we're missing one more butterfly over here. Thank you, thank you, Stephen. And I'm going to invite you to fill this cross with your hopes, with your dreams. If stairs are a challenge for you, please let me know. And um, just before you go up, let us pray. Christ is risen. Hope is alive and moves among us. Help us to proclaim this, Holy One. May we remember that despair is not the end of your story. Help us to live as an Easter people who believe that God's love has absolutely no restrictions. So I invite you, amen. I invite you to bring your butterflies of hope, decorate the cross, the altar, all of these spaces with your longings, with your dreams, that will change this little corner of the world and beyond. Let go and let come. Yeah. Switch the slide. No.
about this song. This is a song that Pierre back there. Oh, go ahead. Go yeah. ahead. So I, w I was away for almost four weeks and Pierre Gallant, who would work, we, we did a team music ministry for several years. He came back out of retirement and he carried the torch for me while I was away. And he wrote this song and it became the theme song for the type of meditations that were done. So this is going to follow up very much the application that Lisa did this morning. It just takes things a little deeper in some ways than, than her explanation. Uh, you'll see what I mean.
ready? What about Tiff and Luigi? Are you ready? Yeah? Are we all ready? Yeah? Are the kids back there ready? Okay. So, kids back there, when you see the lovely lady Susan at the back, hold up your picture, Susan. When you see Susan starting to walk forward, you're going to scooch around the back and you're going to follow her up, okay? So, mommies and daddies, you got that? All right. You're not supposed to go off when I still need you. There I go. So, on behalf of um, the whole family, the DeMarzo Wood family, welcome to all of you who are here to celebrate this special occasion with T-Bay. And I'm going to switch between Tiberio and T-Bay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let us pray. The moment Jesus came up out of the baptismal waters, the skies opened up and he saw God's spirit. It looked like a dove descending and landing on him, and along with the spirit, a voice said, this is my son, chosen and marked by my love, delight of my life. As a mother comforts her child, so you comfort us, O oh God. As a father has compassion for his children, so the Lord is compassionate and merciful. Amen. So why are we here? What's this What's this? purpose that we're here for. Well, there was this radical record of Jesus's concern for welcoming little children. And he turned everyone upside down. It's like, kids, like, really? You know, I want to hear the scholars and the theologians and, and all those wonderfully intelligent, wise, smart, wisdom people. But Jesus said, you got it wrong, people. And he said, bring the children to me. Bring them so that people could learn from them. They didn't always have the baggage we had. So people brought the children to Jesus, hoping he might touch them. And the disciples shooed them off, but Jesus was extremely irate, and he let them know it. And he said, don't push these children away. Don't ever get in between them and me. These children are at the very core of God's message of love. And unless you accept God's kingdom in the simplicity of a child, you won't, you won't be able to have that experience. So gathering up the children in his arms, he laid his hands of blessing on them. And we heard that from Mark 10. So I'm going to invite Mary up. I'm going to invite Tiff and Luigi and T-Bay up, come join me up here. So you want to go on this side? Oh yes, we lost our microphone. It is right here. Look at all these lovely butterflies. Go. Am I on? Yes. Today, Tiberio de Marcy is with us for the initiation of baptism into the family of Christ and to be welcomed into this faith community. Welcome, Tiberio. Yay! <laughs> okay. I will invite you, and you'll see on the screen. I we'll invite you to join us in our affirmation of faith. We are not alone. Oh, there we go. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating. Word made flesh to reconcile and make new who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus 
crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Now, um, are, are godparents ready? Because we're going to be switching over in just a moment. So our godparents are actually online, and they're in London, England. So isn't technology wonderful that we can include them this way? So Megan and Alex are standing by. We're going to start with the promises of the parents, and then we're going to ask our virtual godparents to promise as well. There they are. Hey! <laughs> so, are you ready? Tiffany and Luigi, will you share your faith with Tiberio, growing him in faith, in hope, and in love? Whoops, that was for you. Try that again. All right. And now we're going to switch to the godparents. Um, you might want to take your mute off, Alex. All right. So Megan and Alex and the grandparents, will you grow in faith with this child, trusting that you are not alone, you live in God's world? We will. We will. Awesome. We'll see you in a bit. <laughs> so now we're going to switch back because every single person here, you have a responsibility in this as well, okay? And five, four, three, two, one. And we can fast forward one and one more. There we go. So your answer is going to be is going to be we will. Let's try that. We yeah. will. He said it. You don't know what you said it to, though. <laughs> Family and friends, brothers and sisters, do you commit yourselves to support and nurture these wonderful people within a community which worships God, loves and serves others, seeks justice and resists evil? We will. We will. Amen. Water, water bearers. water to live, right? Who drinks water? You drink water? Anybody else drink water? Yeah. Okay, I'm so glad to hear that. So we need water to live, and by pouring this water in, this is called a baptismal font, by pouring it in there, we're going to use that for Tibe's special ceremony to remind him that God loves him so very much. So, please, pour away. I'll let you just do this. Perfect. Thank you so much. So you guys can hang out around here. Can you see from there? Can everyone see from there? Okay. Wonderful. May God's Spirit be upon us and all these waters of daily use, which we now will use. Can you come closer? Thanks, buddy. You're going to get a little wet which we now use to baptize <laughs> and take it off, take it off, to baptize and welcome to Barrio de Marzo. And the people say, Amen. And with this sign of the cross, we mark you and baptize you in the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. We mark you with the sign of the cross, child of God, and from this day forward, you bear the sign of Jesus Christ. 
And I'm gonna invite all the parents and all you kids to put your hands on T-Bay. Can you scooch in here? Scooch in here. And I'm gonna I'm gonna say a couple words and then I'm gonna say one, two, three, and you're gonna say amen. Okay? Can you get over here too? Do you wanna get in here? Okay. All right. T Bay. There we go. May the Holy Spirit, may love's power guide you, inspire you, and work within you all the days of your life. One, two, three. Amen. Thank you. So now we're going to introduce T Bay to his whole family. We're going to switch slides, please. Dum -dum. Next one. And next one. Yay! So little little one, welcome to this world, this amazing and scary world. Welcome to light and dark, hot and cold, good and evil. Welcome to love and hate, truth and lies, good times and bad. Welcome to the long human pilgrimage from birth to death. Anything can happen here. Everything is possible. Some things must be chosen, others left behind. Welcome to the real world and this circle of friends. Here we turn to God for help in making the choices that lead to life. Would you hold on to that, please? Thank you. So, Tibay, would you like to hold my hand? Yeah? All right, let's go meet your new family, and you guys can come with us. So this, all these people you see here, okay, this is the family that you know, right? You know, you know most of these people. But all of these people, all of these people over here, they're now part of your family too. They are. And it's... And it's pretty incredible. So even though you live far, far away, every time you come here, every time you walk into a church, into a community of love, you belong to this incredible, don't forget Jim back there, he's part of your family too. <laughs> hey, these are all of your family. And any time you need support, you have a question, you need a hug if mom and dad say it's okay, anything you need, your family is here for you. If you need someone to play piano, well, you know, you can call on Michael. And then you have all these people over here in the choir. One of their gifts is singing. So they're going to be singing you a special song in a few minutes. And let's go back up because mommy and daddy and you get a special gift. Watch your step, there's a bit of water there. Wonder how that happened. <laughs> so, Mary, you want me to hold it for you? All right. Now this is a very special candle. This is gonna be T-Bay's baptismal candle. And it's lit from the Christ candle. And it's actually should have been presented to Megan and Alex, but considering they're in London right now, I think we're gonna give it to mom and dad because grandparents are over there so you can home. And T-Bay, that light is the light of Christ and it's passed to you by the church and your family, and may that light always be yours, shine in your heart. Amen. Now, for my friend Luigi and Tiff, we wanted to include a special blessing, an Irish blessing. Uh, let's see, we got London, we have Ireland, we have Italy, we have West Island, all over the place. So, may God grant you always a sunbeam to warm you, a moonbeam to charm you, a sheltering angel 
so nothing can harm you, laughter to cheer you, faithful friends near you, and whenever you pray, heaven to hear you. Amen. And on the day, are we ready? Okay. So, words will be up there. This is a song for you. On the day that Tebe was born. On the day that Tebe was born. On the day that Tebe was born. The angels sang and they blew on their horns and they danced. They danced. They smiled and raised up their hands on the day, on the day the tea was born. On the day that you all were born, on the day that you all were born, on the day that you all were born, the angels sang and they blew on their horns and they danced. They danced. They smiled and raised up their hands on the day, on the day, on the day you all were born. On the day that we all were born. On the day that we all were born. On the day that we all were born. The angels sang and they blew on their horns and they danced, they danced. They smiled and raised up their hands on the day, on the day that we all were born. this community, this neighborhood, and beyond. So as you imagine that, I will invite our ushers to walk through as you are comfortable, and I will ask our choir to lead in the hymn, Ale Ale, Voices United 958.
still on. Good. Thank you, Stephen. Loving God, we ask you to receive these gifts, both those that are in the plate, but those that are overflowing in love in the community around us. Please use them in the name of your kingdom, your love, your community. Amen. I'd invite you to pass the peace. It's a tradition in, uh, in many communities of faith, yes. So when I say Christ, peace be with you, you would respond and also with you. So Christ, peace be with you all. Let us greet each other with signs of peace of Christ. It could be a hug, a shake, a nod, whatever you're comfortable with. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And there's a box right there. Didn't it feel good to get up and stretch? Yeah. It's like, oh my gosh. Well, we are almost at the end of our time together. This is a time in community where we offer prayers for those close to us, for community, for neighborhood, for global concerns, I will be offering some prayers out loud, but you're also invited to lift your prayers out loud or just name them in the silence of your heart. Let us pray. As purple gives way to gold, hear our prayers for times of suffering in a world that is unjust for too many. May we live towards wholeness as thorns give way to crowns. Hear our prayers for oppression in our land by trade that is imbalanced. May we live towards liberation for all. As tombs give way to gardens, hear our prayers for worries that keep us from flourishing in your care. Let us pray now for all those people and places needing God's loving care. For Blair, Leanne, and family as they mourn Flo's passing. For family and friends of Francis Blankhorn as they mourn her loss. For Richard, for the Haltridge family as they mourn Bridget's passing. For Alec and Sandra, for Harry, for Lee, for Mike and Jan, for Lisa M, Kate, George, and Jane. For Dorothy, Katie and Robert, the Murphy family, for Roy, Addy, for Wendy and family, for Bonnie and Michael, for Terry and Philip. We pray for so many needing God's love. We pray for Susan. We pray for Joseph, for Lashonda and Tyrone. We pray for Terry and Philip. God, we, play, we pray for the Wood DiMarzo family, for the love that surrounds T-Bay, for the grandparents and aunties and uncles and cousins and friends, for the whole family as they continue to love and support and nurture T-Bay's future and love and faith. We pray for places in the world that are broken and needing your love. We pray for the people of Ukraine. May they find relief and hope. 
that this day brings. We pray for all those living in Gaza, for all the mothers and the children, for the whole country. May your peace surpass all of the hate. We, play for, we pray for places like Haiti and other places in the world that are struggling. God, bring your care to wherever there's brokenness and uncertainty. As yesterday gives way to tomorrow, hear our prayers, God, for the future. A future that sometimes holds some uncertainty or loneliness. We know with you our love will be found. May we live towards your vision of love. And in the prayer that your son taught us in the language and the version of our choice, let us pray. Our Mother, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Woo! Yes, it's hot in here. And considering we have no heat, that's quite a feat. On that note, I just want to say a huge shout out to Eric, to Jim, to other Jim who's not here, and many angels who figured out some kind of concoction to blow the air from Adair Hall into the sanctuary because our furnace is broken. Can you believe it? I know, they're amazing. So thank you. And all the angels who made today possible, our choir, Michael, all our tech team, I could not do this without you. Megan and Alex, we love you. To the family, T-Bay, this is your day, my friend. Yep, it is, it is. Um, and to all our helpers who have the hall prepared really nicely with tons of sweets. Congratulations, Tibay. Congratulations, Tiff and Luigi. May God continue to bless you and shine upon your family. May the love of the risen Christ nourish us and sustain us. May the eternal light of the world renew and inspire us to live lives of care and compassion. And may we go forward and be the body of the risen Christ. Amen. Our musical sending is one I am sure you will know well. So feel free to move, sing along with it. Check, check. Happy day. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. When Jesus was hushed. When Jesus was hushed. When Jesus was hushed. When Jesus was hushed. He washed our sins away. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day.
Jesus sends away.